welcome to this vigil for Trans Day of Remembrance. The very first thing to say is that we're live streaming, so if you don't want to be in the live stream, if you sit um, just back here, then you won't be on the camera. Um, there's also some bits and pieces of adult colouring where the tables are at the side if you'd prefer to spend some time doing that during this service. You are more than welcome in this space. It is your space, it is our space, to hold together in solidarity. If you are in the space at Downing Place, please do join us for refreshments in the hub after the vigil, which is just through this door under the organ pipes. You will also find the toilets out there to the left of the hub exit. In the unlikely event that we need to leave the space quickly, you can leave via that door or the welcome area door and gather across the road in Downing Place, outside the Downing site. And welcome to those joining us via YouTube. Um, this vigil is co-facilitated by the Cambridge Solidarity Hub and the Open Table Network. At Open Table events, we use the phrase, you are more than welcome to indicate that you are not only welcome, but central to this time we spend together. This space of radical solidarity, where we make time and space for each other, and for trans, non-binary, gender creative, and agender folks around the world. I'm often asked why it's important to mark TDOR, and I know we're a diverse bunch, so, I felt that it's important to just take a moment to talk about that as we begin our vigil. As a trans and genderqueer person myself, I get that it's a complicated one. And yet, it feels more important to do this this year than ever before. TDOR was started in 1999 by trans advocate Gwendolyn Ann Smith as a vigil to honour the memory of Rita Hester, a trans woman who was killed in 1998. The vigil commemorated all the trans people lost to violence since Rita Hester's death and began an important tradition that has become the annual Transgender Day of Remembrance. Gwendolyn writes that Trans Day of Remembrance seeks to um, highlight the losses we face due to anti-trans bigotry and violence. I am no stranger to the need to fight for our rights, and the right to simply exist is first and foremost. With so many seeking to erase trans people, sometimes in the most brutal ways possible, it is vitally important that those we lose are remembered, and that we continue to work for justice. It's really important to note that the risk of suffering violence and murder as a trans person is an intersectional one. It's much higher for those who are Latinx, black, living in poverty, disabled, female or feminine, or living outside the gender binary. And yet, we need to consider that this is something that happens in the UK too. The number of trans folks lost in the UK is rising and this year has included two people aged 12 and 15. So it's really important that we take some time to reflect together and to move forward. So this is a space to hold our fears and our hopes, our sorrow and our potential, our silence and our call to speak out. Let's be quiet for a moment as we prepare to hold this time and space together.
we're going to sing those who would like to a couple of times as we share together in this space two very very short very simple songs feel free to join in if you'd like to or not if you prefer I learnt the, the, the tune to these ancient words by ear. From the deep I call to you. And it simply repeats that, that, those words four times over. From the deep I call to you. I'll sing it through. Feel free to join in if and when you'd like. And we'll sing it through a few good times. From the deep I call to you, from the deep I call to you, from the deep I call to you. From the deep I call to you, from the deep I call to you, from the deep I call to you. From the deep I call to you, from the deep I call to you, from the deep I call to you. deep I call to you from the deep I call to you from the deep I call to going to share a poem called Being Transgender by Lee Makobe. The first time I uttered a prayer was in a stained glass cathedral. I was kneeling long after the congregation was on its feet. Dip both hands into holy water, trace the trinity across my chest, my tiny body drooping like a question mark all over the wooden pew. I asked Jesus to fix me, and when he did not answer, I befriended silence in the hopes that my sin would burn on my tongue, salve my mouth would dissolve like sugar, but shame lingered as an aftertaste. And in an attempt to reintroduce me to sanctity, my mother told me of the miracle I was, said I could grow up to be anything I want. I decided to be a boy. It was cute. I had snapback, toothless grin, used skinned knees as street cred, played hide and seek with what was left of my goal. I was it, the winner to a game the other kids couldn't play. I was the mystery of an anatomy, a question asked but not answered, tight roping between awkward boy and apologetic girl. And when I turned 12, the boy phase wasn't deemed cute anymore. It was met with nostalgic ants who missed seeing my knees in the shadow of skirts who reminded me that my kind of attitude would never bring a husband home, that I exist for heterosexual marriage and child...
nothing to do with hating my body. I just love it enough to let it go. I treat it like a house. And when your house is falling apart, you do not evacuate. You make it comfortable enough to house all your insides. You make it pretty enough to invite guests over. You make the floorboards strong enough to stand on. My mother fears I have named myself after fading things. As she counts the echoes left behind by Maya Hall, Leela Alcorn, Blake Brockington, she fears that I'll die without a whisper, that I'll turn into what a shame conversations at the bus stop. She claims I have turned myself into a mausoleum, that I am a walking casket. News headlines have turned my identity into a spectacle, Bruce Jenner on everyone's lips while the brutality of living in this body becomes an asterisk at the bottom of equality pages. No one ever thinks of us as human because we are more ghost than flesh, because people fear that my gender expression is a trick, that it exists to perverse, that it ensnares them without their consent, that my body is a feast for their eyes and hands, and once they have fed off my queer, They'll regurgitate the parts they did not like. They'll put me back into the closet, hang me with all the other skeletons. I will be the best attraction. Can you see how easy it is to talk people into great coffins? To misspell their names on gravestones? And people still wonder why there are boys rotting they go away in high school hallways. They are afraid of becoming another hashtag in a second. Afraid of classroom discussions becoming like Judgment Day. And now oncoming traffic is embracing more trans children than parents. I wonder how long it will be before the trans suicide notes start to feel redundant before we realize that our bodies become lessons about sin way before we learn how to love them. Like God didn't save all this breath and mercy. Like my blood is not the wine that washed over Jesus' feet. My prayers are now getting stuck in my throat. Maybe I am finally fixed. Maybe I just don't care. Maybe God finally listened to my prayers. And so we're going to move now into an act of remembrance. Sometimes during these services, the names of all of the people who have been lost over the year are read aloud. But sometimes that's just too much. Too much to hear, too much to encounter all at once together in this space. So we're going to have a couple of different slides on screen. There's an opportunity to come if you would like and take an origami flower or heart from the table to take away with you and spend some time in remembrance in your own way over the coming minutes and hours and days. The flowers, which are the ones that look a little bit like this, have the names in them. So there's a few names in each flower that you may like as you take away to unfold and have a look at and learn a bit more about some of their stories and say their names. Or if you'd prefer, you might choose to take a heart, which enables you to reflect in a different way without reading that list of names. Or you might prefer to light a candle, which you can do 
year on the table. There'll be a little bit of music, then a moment of quiet, then a little bit of music to use to remember in whatever way works best for you. Feel free to take, to light a candle, or just to sit quietly if that works for you.
And so, if you have the space, the energy, the spoons, you might want to spend some time over the coming days learning their stories, saying their names. But we move now into a time of hope, of looking forward, and Sarah's going to read a poem for us called Bird Wings. Your grief for what you've lost lifts a mirror up to where you bravely, you're bravely working. Expecting the worst, you look and instead, here's the joyful face you've been wanting to see. Your hand opens and closes and opens and closes. If it were always a fist, or always stretched open, you would be paralyzed. Your deepest presence is in every small contracting and expanding. The two as beautifully balanced and coordinated as bird wings. We're now going to play another short meditative song called I Am. You might like to sing along or sing, sit quietly and reflect. This is the last song before we prepare to leave this space.
encourage you on your way out to scan the QR code for Solidarity Hub. One of the sources of hope is us. We are people who can act, who can make a difference. And one of the upcoming Solidarity Hub events is a Right for Rights drop-in where we'll have the opportunity to write to governments around the world for change, including change for trans and non-binary folks. So please do scan that or pick up a leaflet for more info. So let's go out together in solidarity and in hope. I'll play a little bit of music and then stop. Feel free to sit in this space for as long as you need or would like to, bearing in mind that some folks might like some quiet in this space and then to head out through the hub door when you're ready to be in a different space. And thank you to those who have joined us on YouTube and we hope that you will be able to go have a nice cup of something as well. So let's finish our time together with a little bit of music and feel free to move out of this space in your own time.